says in her question, is it permissible for a man to give private Arabic lessons to women uh, he is not related to over Skype or other internet programs? My advice is I treat the Skype, the video conferencing, like the meeting in person. Yani, the woman should have a company with her or a male mahram of her or not to be with herself behind closed doors. It is not to doubt your chastity or honesty or anything, but this is to block the means. To block the means of what? One thing leads to another. And we keep hearing stories uh, happens for Muslims and non-Muslims every day, all the time, as a result of chatting online. And then Nabi Wasallam warned us against having a private meeting between a man and a woman alone without a mahram of this woman or without a third person with them. The same thing could happen online. I mean, developing love and exchanging sweet words, flattering each other, then maybe having a date or developing a love story, even if the woman is married or if the man is married and having children. So there is something in Islam called Saddu al or blocking the means. When you look in the Quran, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Adam alayhi salam with regards to the tree, وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ Don't you go near this tree. He did not say, لَا تَأْكُلَ مِنْهَا He said, rather, don't go near to the tree. He did not say, don't eat from the tree. And the actual prohibition was not to eat from the fruits of the tree. But he said, don't you go near it in order to block the means. Because what happens when you go near it? You rest your back again is that. Then it drops one of its fruits on you. Oh man, it looks very beautiful. And it smells nice. Let me taste it. One thing leads to another. Perhaps if I don't have an experience in this field, I would have said it's okay. Because Skype you know, or the video conference, the person will not be able to stretch out his hand and shake hands with you or touch you or whatever. But actually, it does more than that. And way beyond that, I'm talking about an experience of hearing different stories from different people and how people fell into the trap of uh, Satan via Skyping or video conferencing with the opposite gender, either to give him or her da'wah alone or to chat, to answer questions, or private tutoring, or whatever. So if my purpose is to learn the deen, then I should follow the proper way. For instance, he doesn't have to see me, right? And sitting in a group where the speaker will be on, everybody is listening, that really prevents any possibility of allowing any of the whispers of a shaitan to work out or to deviate or to say a word which may carry, you know, a, word, a, 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 a temptation, you know. So in order to block the means, no, a man and a woman should not Skype even for the purpose, who are not related to each other, who are not mahram of each other, should not Skype alone in order to learn, as you said that if he's a private tutor. So if the speaker is on, you don't have to be on camera, you're listening, you're uh, following the instructions of the tutor, and everybody is listening to what is going on, then it is okay and it is permissible. And by the way, the video conferencing mean of distant learning is very, very effective. Very effective. I have, um, I'm involved in many uh, mediums where we teach students distant learning and uh, over similar programs, you know, video conferencing and so on. So make sure that there are plenty of students and the students of course are attending maybe with their family members or you know, in the privacy of their homes. And we do not sit one on one like a tutor, even though he's a sheikh, it's okay, it doesn't matter. A sheikh or an ordinary person, one thing leads to another that should be 
avoid it.